Tuesday's panel, former Labor Minister Stephen Conroy via Skype and social commentator Prue McSween live in Sydney. Great to have you both. Um, I wanted Thank just to you. play that imagery we're seeing out of New York. It's quite extraordinary. And those scenes is that a hospital ship you know, brought itself into the harbour. I had chills on the back of my spine, actually, when I saw that today. It won't be treating coronavirus victims, Stephen, but this just shows you that they know their systems are almost at breaking point in a first world economy like the US. Absolutely. I mean, they are extraordinary scenes. In Melbourne, it'd be like if they were setting up in, uh, uh, in Botanic Gardens. I mean, it's just such an iconic part of Melbourne. That's an iconic part of, of New York. Uh, and it just demonstrates that they really do feel, uh, if you're a New Yorker, like you're uh, at war uh, when you need that sort of medical deployment to treat the size of the problem. Yeah, and like London, you know, London and the Blitz Pro, uh, New York and 9-11, these two big global cities that are no strangers to adversity, um, but these numbers are staggering. And I saw some footage the other day from a, from a doctor outside a hospital in New York and said this is, this is worse than it was in 9-11. Yes, it's, it's so sad to see someone... I love New York. It's like the pulse or the heartbeat of the world as far as I'm concerned. And to see it going through this, it's, you know, it's not spreading the news, it's spreading the virus. And, you know, New York, Yorkers always have this sort of whatever sort of attitude. And sadly, um, I, th I think there's some politics being played between the Democrat governor and, of course, Trump. And, uh, you know, I think he's been bleating a lot now about, you know, what he needs. Uh, but this will be a wake up call to New Yorkers that to, to see their park, this iconic part of their city, transformed in this way. It's just so heartbreaking. But let's just hope everybody understands the importance of social distancing and taking this virus very seriously. Yeah, well, on social distancing, Stephen, Conroy, we had, we've had some. I'm not going to call it flattening. Right? I'm not going to feed the beast that says it's all OK and you can go back to normal. There's been some movement away from going up, and I wouldn't even say it's anywhere near a decline. And I guess this is the challenge, isn't it? We, we report these statistics every night. There's laggards uh, in terms of infection rates and death, sadly. And so it's far too early to say that even what we're doing now is working. And I think every Australian needs to get the message. This is weeks and weeks of this stuff. No, absolutely. I mean, the, the stage two uh, restrictions that were put in about 10 days ago or a little bit more now, they are now starting to bite. You're starting to see, uh, as you said, the slowing of the increase, not, not a decrease, just a slowing of the increase. And as the medical experts are saying, we want to see an actual genuine decline before we would consider... Uh, removing any of the restrictions. We're in, we're in de facto stage three in most states now. You, you really should only leave home if you've got for three or four reasons. Uh, and people should not remotely take heart from this yet until the doctors say, now's the time to start relaxing. And that, that is going to be you know, three, four, five weeks, possibly, depending on how we manage the community uh, transmission issue and, and hopefully you now you've just seen six baggage handlers uh, get it at Adelaide Airport late this afternoon. Things like that. They're going to be the ones, the cases that, God, how many people have they mixed with over the last uh, four or five days potentially and they've possibly infected. So there'll be a massive tracing job going on there right now. Yeah, well, it'd be fascinating too with, with that whole issue of baggage handling because if they've come from Europe, and it'd be interesting whether the planes were Asian origin or from Europe, uh, those, those bags, Prue, have been inside a hold. We all know uh, it's 14, 15 hours at very, very, very cold temperatures. That hasn't killed off the virus. Let's presume it's come from those bags and not been some other point of transmission. It shows you how strong, how virulent the strain is, obviously, to survive those temperatures and that period of time in the air. And those baggage bags have been amongst others, and the baggage handlers have handled thousands of other bags. So, you know, that could be a huge source of issue, of problems down the track and tracing it all will be almost impossible so we all just have to understand to be so vigilant and you know I'm wiping down everything in my house you know every moment I think of it because we've just got to understand it can be transmitted so easily yeah well we're all going to be pretty clean at the end of this hey Stephen 
Help me out here. There's a New South Wales Labor MP. I think he's Labor, <laughs> Upper House MP. Yes. Now, he's out there praising the Chinese government. He says that Australia needs tough, unswerving leadership, a bit like China. He talks them up. Um, he, he says they've fought uh, coronavirus, they've contained it, they've been emphatic and they've been decisive. Now, really surprises me to be, be banging on at this time about President Xi because there's a lot of dispute now that the 3,500 deaths recorded by the Chinese are much more likely to be 40,000 plus. Yeah, this bloke is an absolute disgrace to the Labor Party. It's, it's astonishing that he's still in Parliament uh, and uh, the New South Wales Labor Party needs to have a good heart look at itself why it's got someone so pathetically just putting out Chinese propaganda from the floor of a parliament uh, that is a democratic institution. I mean, absolute disgrace. Yeah, well, I'll leave it there. You've said it better than anyone, and it's your own tribe. It oh. couldn't be stronger, Stephen Conroy. <laughs> we'll come back to you, Prue, next week. You can lay into him then. I'm sure you'll say Please, something equally I, stupid. I really want to say a few words about that. <laughs> Gotta go. They're, They're in my ear. They're in my ear. Taste in my face. Okay, play. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much for your company. You got up.